It is my pleasure now to uh, welcome to the stage Denise Turner from Newsworks UK. Denise has worked in communications research for nearly 30 years in full service and media agencies. And in the UK, Denise used neuroscience to show that context is critical in determining the effectiveness of digital advertising. Denise is going to share with us how the UK market is embracing this research and how this contributes to a change in media buying behaviour. Please welcome Denise. Very much. It's lovely to be here with you uh, today. Um, just don't ask me any questions about Brexit, okay? <laughs> you can tell from my accent that I come from Ireland. I'm about to become an Irish citizen. I've decided it's too much. Um, but I'm gonna. Uh, that was wonderful from Richard because it gave us a sense of, you know, the, the science behind what we do. So I'm going to take you through work we've done in the UK, um, putting that into practice, really addressing. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we face in terms of um, really promoting and um, talking about news brands. The big, the big challenge we face is a digital one. In the UK, 25 million people read a news brand every day, 18 million of those in digital, and then there's 12 million in print because people don't just read one thing or the other, do they? How can we then look at um, promoting the benefits of digital news brands and the, the real sort of USPs that they give um, for advertisers? But the problem, at the same time as that growth in readership and audience that we've seen, we've also seen the way that um, buying has gone to a bit of a scattergun approach. Um, you know, that actually if you find people on the internet, it doesn't mind, it doesn't matter where you find them. Uh, that actually an, a person is the same wherever you encounter them. The exposure in different environments online is exactly the same. Now, we don't believe that's true. Uh, you know, our hypothesis was that a Times reader is in a different mindset when they're consuming the Times online to uh, when they're on Facebook to when they're on a transactional site such as eBay. So we sort of seem to have forgotten the where of media planning. And I... I, I don't want to sound like a bit of an old fogey, um, but you know we sort of have forgotten some of those very strong and important media planning principles that the where that people see the ad is, is going to make a difference. It's a bit, for me, it's a bit like combining television, radio and newspapers and saying they're all exactly the same. Well, we know they're not. So why are we doing the same thing when it comes to digital audience buying? So we decided that we needed to do something to address this, to really challenge the perceptions in the market and start to try and change behaviour. Uh, and we wanted to bring context targeting back uh, to the fore. So we, we sort of thought about different methodologies. And actually, I don't know about you, but I'm not always a very good witness to my own behaviour. I don't always remember things very well. They're in my long-term memory, like Richard said. But I, don't always, I can't always get them out. Uh, obviously. So, um, so we decided actually we had to take a bit of a different approach and we turned to neuroscience and we worked with uh, NeuroInsight in the UK and we thought actually that's a great way of researching people's, uh, percep you know, people's perceptions online because they're not, you're not asking them, you're measuring their behaviour. It's become quite a well-used methodology in the UK and a number of different industries and agencies have used it. So uh, the Trade Body for Radio, Radio Centre has used it, the out-of-home company Ocean Outdoor has used it, various agencies such as Mindshare have used it. So it's becoming a very well-accepted methodology because I think surveys have their place, but sometimes you need to go a different way and look at um, how people are responding to advertising without really asking them. So we turn to neuroscience, a little bit of the... Um, the methodology, I'm not going to go into lots of detail because Richard has sort of told you about all the different methods. We recruited five uh, well-known UK brands. Um, so most of these, hopefully you'll be aware of. Ernest Jones, in case you don't know, is a jewelry brand. Um, obviously Channel 4, Volkswagen, uh, LG, and Nationwide, um, a building society in the UK. They had different um, creatives which they supplied to us. Some of those creatives were static images. Some were, were what we call subtle motion, they moved slightly online, and some were full video. 
So we had a different, we had a range of different creatives that we used in different brands. 139 people uh, is 1860 representative of the population and even gender split had their brain activity measured. Uh, we gave them a series of different tasks to do. Um, we were focusing, because we were focusing on digital, it was all about digital activities. So first of all, they freely browsed uh, around different websites and, and of course, as, as they would do, they naturally came across brand communications. Uh, they also then had exposure to those five brand ads in different contexts. Uh, each respondent saw four of the five uh, in two different online environments, uh, both premium content sites, which included news brands and magazines, and social media. Importantly, they, all of their activities were interspersed with some television viewing. I, I like to think of it as a bit of a palate cleanser. Uh, it's, it stops you sort of, oh yeah, that's what I saw just now, uh, what's going on in between. So they were, they were sort of, and the order of whether they saw things in premium content or in social media was, was changed, so there wasn't ever an order effect. So that, um, and also importantly, I think one of the things that happens when, when you do neuroscience research is that people are filmed from behind, so you can match what's happening from those brain sensors with what they're actually saying on the screen and what the guys in Melbourne do. So we, all, our, all our data went to Melbourne for a, a analysis. What they do is they match what's happening in the brain with what's going on on the screen so you can match exactly what people are seeing at what point. So a really, really robust uh, way of looking at things. I'm not going to go into loads of detail, but I want to show you a few of the uh, findings and talk a little bit about what that meant uh, in terms of uh, what, what we then did with it um, in the UK. The first thing to say, and, and this was absolutely astonishing to us, um, although lovely, um, memory response is strong, much stronger on premium sites than when people are just browsing. So, you know, you saw that uh, brain map from Richard. On the right-hand side, news brands, you will have seen that there's a, there's a lot more pink and red. There's a lot higher levels of activity. And importantly, there's a lot more activity in the top half of the brain, which is where the memory encoding happens. Now, uh, what I'm not here to say is that social media doesn't have a role to play. I'm here to say that premium content sites such as news brands and magazines have a complementary role with social media. So don't just try and assume that all digital is equal. Actually, they perform different roles, and let's start treating them that way. Premium content and social media are both better than just run-of-the-internet approach to audience buying. So let's think about how we plan things in a different way. Also, one of the things um, we looked at was we didn't just choose amazing ads or terrible ads. We chose ads that were very representative of the types of ads that appear online. So the, this, you know, you've seen some of the measures here that Richard talked about. Um, the, these ads were very similar to, uh, in terms of uh, how they performed across different measures to the ads that people encountered in their free browsing uh, experience. So what I didn't want to do was say, you know, people come to me and say, well, Denise, you chose ads that are just amazing. No wonder they performed a lot better. Uh, no, we didn't do that. So I'm going to give you a couple of uh, pieces of evidence as to what happened uh, as a result of those ads appearing in premium content and in social media. So Richard talked about engagement, personal relevance. It's notably stronger for ads and premium sites than it is for social media, 29% higher. Importantly, it's 50% higher than it is for free browsing. So think about the order of effect uh, when you're looking at how you're planning your digital. Emotional intensity uh, is, is stronger for ads and premium sites than it is for social media. So not hugely bigger. And I think I quite like that as a result because it, it shows that actually there is a role to play for social media because you choose who you're going to interact with on social media and you're probably you know, relatively involved in, in what's going on uh, when you're uh, consuming uh, social media. So there is a role to play for both of those uh, types of digital content. What's really important, though, is memory encoding. Now, I don't know about you, but... Um, 
one of the things that happens, you know, in social media, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and it, m it might not actually, I might not register all of it uh, very well. But what we found was that left brain memory encoding was much higher in premium sites than it was uh, on social media. Right brain slightly less because right brain uh, and social media, actually there is a bit of a bigger picture or a bit of a more sort of wider holistic view, whereas you might not get all of the words and the detail, which is really important. And Jacqueline uh, will come on when she talks about the, the News Works New Zealand study. Um, she will talk about the importance of actually words and detail in terms of moving people along uh, that purchase journey. So the sort of conclusions that we came to was that actually premium sites and social media provide complementary context. So don't try and substitute one for the other. It would be like substituting uh, radio for newspapers or television for newspapers because they do different things and they all have different roles to play. So we look at those measures again that Richard talked about. This is uh, the placed brands ads, so those five brands ads that we looked at on social. <coughs> they do pretty well. When you look then at um, uh, premium sites, and this is actually um, news brands as part of those premium sites, they're much stronger on the memory encoding, particularly left brain memory encoding, and also engagement, personal relevance. I choose to engage with the news brand or the newspaper I read because I've chosen it. You know, I've chosen it. It, it reflects my views, and I like reading it. But you know, if I'm um, social media, you're interesting that you see that at the bottom they've got visual attention, do really well on visual attention. You think about how you scroll through social media. There's lots of visual attention, but it's quite fleeting. So it's important to think about things in a different way and use those things in a complementary way. So that's the message that we've been going out with uh, in the UK over the last 18 months and talking to uh, agencies and marketeers about thinking about a different way of planning and buying digital media. It's been our most um, covered piece of, I don't know where this is, how oh, it is working. It's been our most covered piece of uh, research that we've ever done. I've been at Newsworks for four years, before that I did you know, 25 years in agencies. Um, 70 plus pieces of coverage and people are still asking me to come and talk to them about it. It's, uh, I think there's a sense of, People understand that this amorphous mass of digital doesn't really work like that, and we need to think about a different way of doing it. Importantly, though, it has also started to change behaviour. This is a quote from um, uh, Vicky Handley, who's the senior manager at Lloyds Bank in the UK. And she, she'd been thinking about the fact that actually she needed to do things differently when it came to digital. Uh, and, and sort of they, at the same time as we were talking about the research, we went to talk to her and she said, you know, it's, that's exactly what I need to be doing. My moving away from just a scattergun programmatic approach to actually focus more tightly on premium inventory and put my ad in the right sort of place online. We started to see um, a change in behaviour. We started seeing more people going to a direct buy, uh, more people using private marketplaces, online rather than this just chasing people wherever they are on the internet because clicks are one thing but behavior and purchase behavior is a completely different thing. We've done a few other pieces of research where we've shown that actually you might be getting loads of impressions and I call it cheap as chips but if it's not doing anything for you, if it's not starting to change people's buying behavior then it's a waste of your money. So actually going and advertising on premium content sites online is a much more cost-effective way of reaching your potential consumers in the long run. So I'm really encouraged that actually this has started to change behaviour in the UK uh, because it's all very well doing a piece of research, but if it just sort of sits there and doesn't make people think about things or do things a bit differently, then it's, it's not uh, useful at all. So I'm really encouraged by this, and, and 18 months on, I'm still being asked to go and talk to agencies and clients about this. Thank you very much.